The acquisition of Activision Blizzard has generated a new wrinkle today. Sony has commented on the deal and exclusivity. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. More updates on the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Sony has finally made comment about the deal and what it expects to happen regarding exclusivity of games such as the Megaton Call of Duty. We head on over to the report from Video Games Chronicle. It reads, Sony responds to Xbox Activision deal. We expect multi-platform games due to contractual agreements. PlayStation parent appears to suggest new Call of Duty games could remain on its platform. This is by Andy Robertson over at Video Games Chronicle. Sony has responded for the first time to Microsoft's proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard and said that it expects games to remain multi-platform due to, quote, contractual agreements. Here's the full quote. We expect that Microsoft will abide by contractual agreements and continue to ensure Activision games are multi-platform, end quote, a Sony spokesperson said via the Wall Street Journal on Thursday. Activision created some of PlayStation's most successful games in Call of Duty series. Last year, the series was both the first Vanguard and third Black Ops Cold War best-selling games on PlayStation in the US, according to NPD. However, the future of the series on PS5 and PS4 was put into doubt following Microsoft's announcement that it will acquire Activision Blizzard in a nearly $70 billion deal, not million dollar here, as VGC has said, $70 billion deal. Moving a bit further down now, the publisher has had a long-standing content exclusivity arrangement with PlayStation for the Call of Duty series, and it's this Sony could be referring to in its latest statement. Such agreements likely cover multiple years. Following its acquisition of Bethesda last year, Microsoft honored exclusivity agreements for Deathloop and the upcoming Ghostwire Tokyo. Just so we have the full context, it's also important to note that Activision has noted it does not plan on removing existing PlayStation games as well following the acquisition, which is something that aligns with Phil Spencer's comments as well when the acquisition was announced. Um, he's saying in, reportedly intends to keep making some Activision games for PlayStation, uh, stating that, quote, I'll just say to players out there who are playing placed, playing, pardon me, Activision Blizzard games on Sony's platform, it's not our intent to pull communities away from that platform and we remain committed to that. This is something we discussed in the video the other day. Things like Call of Duty Warzone will remain on PlayStation consoles in the same way that Elder Scrolls Online and Fallout 76 and Minecraft, these, you know, large service-based multi-platform games will continue to live on um, as long as the respected developers will support them. So again, not expecting that to change anytime soon. So it seems like we might have conflicting reports here. On the one hand, Sony is saying it expects Xbox and Microsoft and Activision to continue to publish those multi-platform games on their platform due to contractual agreements. Whereas on the other hand, Microsoft is saying, Phil Spencer is saying that they'll continue to support existing communities. Um, but undoubtedly this deal, just like the ZeniMax one, is about delivering games to Xbox customers exclusively on platforms where Game Pass exists. And just like we see with Redfall and Starfield and likely Elder Scrolls 6 and any future Bethesda games, other than the games already supported on PlayStation platforms, they're going to be exclusive as well. That surely has to be the intent on Microsoft's part, and I don't blame them. Like we said with Bethesda, you don't pay $7.5 billion to keep things the same. You certainly don't spend $68.7 billion and keep things the same as well. Um, I'm not sure what Sony is referring to when it comes to these contractual obligations. Now, they might re be referring to that long-term marketing deal that obviously with the Call of Duty series in the past has spanned multiple entries, multiple years. We saw PlayStation kick off the last generation, the PS4 generation, with the marketing rights to Call of Duty games starting, I believe, in 2015 with the release of Black Ops 3, if my memory serves me correctly. And they've had it since then. It, it, it has since been renewed. I'd have to double check when that renewal happened. But uh, how how long that's meant to last we're not sure now what i do know about these marketing deals is that sometimes they can be made within a year of the game's release right like you know things um that aren't quite uh you know long-standing or you know long-running series like call of duty they happen on a game by game basis and these deals are finalized within 12 months of launch the Call of Duty series is different and these deals span multiple entries like we've established here. At the same time though, these deals aren't contingent on those games landing exactly where they're stipulated to in the, the contract when the ink dries. So for instance, if PlayStation has a deal on the next five Call of Duty games spanning 2018, let's say, to 2022, um, if one of those games misses its window, it's not like Activision owes PlayStation a AAA game and the marketing rights to that game 
in the window that they specified for Call of Duty that year. So there is always some malleability within these contracts just in case things fall out of line. You know, for instance, there must be marketing deals with platform holders all the time and then games get delayed. For instance, Microsoft has had a marketing deal with Cyberpunk 2077. Um, that game was due to land, you know, firstly in, you know, in April and then September and then eventually it was December. Um, and the marketing deal was still in place by the time that game eventually launched. It's not like CD Projekt Red owed Microsoft anything in April or September that year. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. So there needs to be some malleability in these contracts. And I dare say Microsoft is going to do its best to adjust the contracts in a way that allows them to at least put Call of Duty into Xbox Game Pass starting in 2023 um, and probably look to secure exclusivity from 2024. Now, regardless of the this con these contractual obligations that Sony is stating, if it is the case that Microsoft can't make Call of Duty exclusive to Xbox, you know, for the duration of this marketing arrangement or these contractual obligations, it's going to happen eventually. I almost guarantee it. Um, and the reason is Microsoft values the Call of Duty customers that PlayStation has right now more as Xbox customers than they do the revenue generated by those Call of Duty customers on PlayStation. That is to say the 70% cut that they would get from selling Call of Duty copies on PlayStation, the 70% cut they'd get from DLC and microtransactions from the millions of Call of Duty customers on PlayStation, those customers are better served as Xbox customers via Game Pass or via traditional purchase means because they then start spending revenue within the ecosystem on other titles as well. So it benefits Microsoft more to cut their ties with PlayStation and all of that revenue that comes with having Call of Duty on PlayStation to get those customers over to their side of the fence and spending within their ecosystem. Because all of a sudden, you're, you're not just missing out on revenue from Call of Duty PlayStation customers, you're also missing out on the revenue that they spend in the PlayStation ecosystem so long as they stay there. Microsoft wants those customers in their ecosystem. So when a Call of Duty player migrates from PlayStation to Xbox, all of a sudden Microsoft is getting a 30% cut on the Assassin's Creed game that they buy that year or the microtransactions they spend in Rocket League or Fortnite or Rainbow Six Siege, for instance. That is what is more valuable to Microsoft, getting those customers into their ecosystem. And if it means losing 5 million PlayStation Call of Duty customers and only gaining, let's say, a million Xbox customers via making Call of Duty exclusive, then they're going to do it. I almost guarantee it. Anyway, interesting development in the Activision Call of Duty Xbox acquisition saga. Like I said in my first video, there'd be plenty more videos to delve into this topic as details started to unravel. I dare say there might be another one in the next couple of days. So if you have enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. There'll be plenty more on the way. Let me know what you think of Sony's response to this acquisition. It has certainly added an interesting wrinkle and this is only going to fuel the flame of speculation from industry pundits. I'm keen to see what everyone else says. I'm keen to see what you think as well. So leave a comment below. Thank you again for checking out the channel and I hope to see you next time.